All right, so we're gonna do a quick recording of setting up a calendar in high level. So if you've booked appointments or have a team where you need to schedule appointments, high level is a good tool to use for that. Calendly is another alternative, but with high level, you don't need to pay for any additional service. So let's jump into it. So once you log into your high level account, come into calendars here, and then you want to go over here to create under calendars, you'll see your calendars here and there's groups here. Groups is specifically for if you have like a team. So I have an events team or you have a sales team or marketing team. Say for example, your sales team, you can put them all in the same group. There's multiple calendars for different type of products or sales calls that you're doing. You can put those together. Also, if you have like a service team, if you do onboarding calls, you can put all those calendars in a group, but we're just going to create a normal calendar here. All right, so there's three different types. There's round robin, there's unassigned booking, and then this is something that's collective booking that's coming later. But for this purpose, we're going to do a round robin, meaning I have multiple people that I'm going to set up in this calendar, but I want it to distribute to who's ever available. There's two options you can do for availability or you can do equal distribution. I typically to do availability. That way, as long as those time slots are available, if I have someone on the team that's available, they can take that call. So you set that up and then you can come in to add a user. I'm just going to add myself for now. And then you can also adjust the priority. So if you want certain users to have a higher priority on the team or a lower priority, you can do that. Or you can just leave it medium and they'll all be the same. You can also have the calls, you can integrate it. So you can do custom, which is if you just want to do phone. But I also have Zoom integrated. You can also do Google Meet as well. For this, I'm just going to do Zoom. And basically what will happen is if anyone books on my calendar, since I have Zoom integrated, it's going to book a call automatically in Zoom and set that meeting up via Zoom. So we'll just call this um, onboarding call. And then if you want to put a description on there in there as well, then you can. And then this right here is the slug. So if we want, whatever you want to call that, I'm just going to call this onboarding. And then this is like 15 minutes. So I'm just going to do 15 men. And then there's the widget type. You can do Neo or classic. I'm just going to leave it as the Neo. That's a newer one, or you can just do a classic. It's just going to be the theme. It doesn't matter. And then this is the appointment title here. So you can do contact name and then we can do onboarding call with and i'll just put my company in here so they'll know this is what will show up in the calendar invite and then colors is just the event you want it to show up as we'll just leave it this default blue here for now save and continue and then this is where you can adjust the slot duration if you want the slots to be 30 minutes you can set the intervals as well so 30 minute intervals and then you can also put in between the appointment so if you need time to wrap up or take notes, you could put a buffer in between it. So I'll say 10 minutes. So that way the team isn't getting back to back calls. And then this right here, you can set the number of appointments each user can get per day. We'll just do four per user. And then this is the amount of appointments the whole team can get as a, a total today. I'm just going to leave that blank. I'll just have that be the default, but you can set that if you want it to also. This right here is going to be how much in advance um, you want people to be able or clients to be able to schedule an appointment. So if you want like a, at least a day in advance so you can prevent like same day or if you just want it to be like a few hours here, I'm just going to do four hours in advance. So there's no last minute calls that will pop up and then you can have it set within a certain date range as well. I like to set this so I increase urgency to get people to book a call. So I typically, I would do three, if it's like a sales or like an onboarding, like I really want people to come here and book the calls like soon. So I'll just do a three day because I know that adoption of the product would be better if I can get them on the call as soon as possible. Or if they fill out a survey and they're interested in a product, 
the sooner I can get them on the call would be great. That way, I don't want them booking like a month or two months out. I want them on the call as soon as possible. You can adjust this depending on your availability. If you want it five days or seven days out, that's totally fine too. This is going to be the office hours. So you can set office hours like particular days. Right now, I just have it from eight to five. But if you wanted to adjust that between 10 to two for certain days of the week, then you totally can. Say if I just wanted to do calls on Tuesday, Tuesday and Thursday, I can do that. And then you can adjust the hours as well. Right now, it's just set to the default. But say if I wanted to have it be from 11 a.m., let's just say to 3 p.m., it will do that. You can do this apply all, and this will update both days as well. If you wanted to add another block as well, then you could here. So say if you wanted to go from, just using this as an example, from four, we want to do PM to five, you can add that on as well if you want to do it for a certain day. This right here is recurring appointments. So if a contact, if you want to allow them to book multiple appointments, you can do that. I usually just leave this off. I don't want to set that up, but if you need this for a recurring appointment, then you can turn that on. But in most cases, I typically don't need that. And then you just go to save and continue. Uh, this is going to be um, a form here. So if you wanted to have them fill out some questions or ask some questions before you hop on a call, you can do a custom form. For now, I'm just going to do none because there's no questions. But if you need to do that, you could do it out and I'll go back with how to do that as well. This sticky contact here, this will all automatically fill out information. So if they opted in or gave information in a page before, like in a survey or something, then it will automatically put their information in. This is if you're charging for the calls, you can integrate Stripe with it as well. This is going to be an acknowledgement email. So typically I just do the contact, the assigned user, and then this, if there's anyone on the team that needs to get it, that's not going to be on the calendar, like a group of some, you can set that up as well. I'm just going to leave that blank. But if you had several people that needed to get notified and like a group, you can add those in as well that aren't necessarily like the assigned user, but you just want it so on your team to know. And then this right here, let the calendar auto confirm my appointment. That's totally fine. This would just send out a link to auto confirm it. You can also allow, if you use Google Calendar, you can allow Google Calendar to send out an invite or update to the invitees as well. This right here is, you can, it would include a link to reschedule, also a link to cancel as well. And then this right here is if contacts are assigned to specific team members, for, say for example, like sales team, and you want them to always get the contact, if it's assigned to them, if they booked a call, then you can check that as well. And then you can skip a sign in if it if it's already been assigned to a user, it'll go back to that user. I'm just gonna leave this off for now. Just leave it open for everyone. This right here is just additional notes that they'll get. If you want to customize this or add anything in here, this is what will be on the calendar invite. This Facebook pixel ID, if you're using any tracking for Facebook and you're running ads or something and you want to track who books a call, you can add your Facebook pixel ID. And this is right here is any other additional custom code you want to put in there like Google Analytics or Twitter or any other HTML or anything that you're using. You can put that in here as well if you want to tweak the look or anything of the calendar. Typically just leave both of these blank for now and the form submission so you can if you have a special page that you want them to go to when they book you can do the form redirect url which is a good option or you can just do the custom thank you message here this is what they'll see once they complete and book the call you can do that as well and then just hit complete and then that is it so you're good we see the onboarding call here I'm going to click this drop down here. So there's options where you can do. You can embed it on a page if you want to. If you have a special page you want to put your calendars on, you can do that. And you can also just send the link out as well. There's a permanent link. This is just like the permanent link of what it's going to be. This is another scheduling link as well that you can use. I typically just use a scheduling link. This is what it will look like when it's available. Right now, I don't have any slots available on here, but what I'll do is I'll go back and I'll set some up so you guys can see that. So this is what it will look like once the scheduling is available. Um, you can just book, you see the times and options that are available here to book calls. So I'm just going to walk through what it looks like to book a call. 
it's just gonna have my info in there. And then if there's any additional information, you can go in there and then just schedule meeting. This was scheduled and then it should bring me back to the, yeah, the thank you page has all the information here, whether I'm in, whether where you meet, they can add it to the calendar, whether it's Google calendar or outlook or iCal add all that information and I also get an email as well. And then that's it. As far as setting up the calendars, we'll go back here to calendar. So you guys can see what it looks like here. So let's just go to, this is the connections here. So if you want to do Stripe or anything, you can do that. So if you click over here in calendars, you'll see your calendar setting here, and then we can go out and see here on a dash on a display, we can see any orders or appointments that have been booked. So I have this one that was added for the 22nd and then we can come to the calendar here. We should be able to see that here on the calendar as well. You should be able to see that in the calendar as well. Right now I have mine set for my calendar, but if I just toggle this up here and then I go to my events team, I can see that calendar is set up here for that strategy session that I just scheduled. And then you can confirm it. It's already confirmed. You can cancel the appointment or edit it from here. Also, you can see the Zoom link that has been um, set up for the meeting, which is already set up automatically for me. You can view any activity log or anything. And then you can also go view the contact too. So if you want to see history or anything for the contact record, you can see all that here too. They visit it, page, anything. Anyway, that is a quick walkthrough of how to set up the calendars. It's pretty cool. Like I say, just come here to calendars. You can go to calendar settings. And then from there, you can set up your calendars. If you need to set up a group, you can set up your groups as well. Also, you can just click this drop down here. So if I wanted to move this to a group, so say I wanted to move this to the events team, then I could do that as well. Just check it and boom, that's added to the events team as well. It's pretty cool. If you have any questions, just let me know. But this is a great alternative if you're already using high level. Definitely provides a lot more resources and tools. I'll be doing more videos on how you can use high level to replace a lot of the systems that you currently use and have in place. Also, if you're interested, I'll drop a link below that if you want to get like a 14 day free trial of high level just to try it out, just drop the link below and we'll advise it as a referral link. So I do get a kickback if you decide to continue with high level, just wanted to be transparent there. Have a good day.